today. Uh, before we head out, I want to really quickly ask y'all, what are y'all interested in? Because we have filmed so many different things in this lot. I want to make sure I can accommodate it to your taste. So tell me, what are y'all fans of? Big Bang. Big Bang Theory? All right. Awesome. Big Bang. Uh, friends. 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 Oh, all right. Friends. Awesome. We got a full friends cart. The, 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 uh, the very last set left. Uh, it is a, the very last jungle themed set over here in Hollywood. So it's a very special one. Uh, it was since... Um, it has appeared in True Blood, it has appeared in Pretty Little Liars. It's Pretty Little Liars is one of the shows that has filmed um, all across the lot. On our left hand side, this appeared in the DC film Aquaman with Jason Momoa and um, with Jason Momoa. Uh, and there's a post credit scene where Randall Park's character is talking to Black Manta about finding Aquaman and, ca and catching Aquaman and finding Atlantis. They're speaking, th that was filmed right here in this, in this shack on our left hand side. Uh, this also appeared in the horror film Annabelle Creation. Um, in a sequence where a scarecrow comes to life and scares the main characters. Um, and then up ahead, right here where, uh, actually where this truck is parking, where we're going on right now. This is uh, from a Gilmore Girls fans. This is where Rory gets hit hit by a deer in the first season of Gilmore Girls. Remember that, if you remember that episode, there's a scene where Rory is getting late to her test. Uh, and on the way there, she gets hit by a deer. 
Uh, and this is and this is where we're and we, where we are kind of like front of Wayne Manor in Batman Forever. There's a scene where the Jim Carrey's Riddler uh, goes up to Wayne Manor and leaves a riddle in the gates of Wayne uh, of, of that of that house. And uh, this is exactly where that was filmed. Now coming up, this not a lot of people have heard about it called Jurassic Park uh, from director Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Um, now most of Jurassic Park was filmed in Hawaii, uh, but because of a of a storm that kind of forced the whole production to evacuate the island, they had to film a very iconic sequence in this road. Uh, can anyone rem can anyone try to guess what that sequence was? We also um, we also filmed a, a pickup shots from the original Muppets movie. Um, there was there were some sequences for the musical number uh, Rainbow Connection with Kermit the Frog. We filmed the scenes. Um, but the, most of these buildings are not necessarily going to have any practical use to them. A lot of them are just have very small space in the in the inside, so the actors can pretend like they're doing things. Uh, and of course, all of our all of our back lots are themed after different uh, types of settings. So, for example, this uh, back lot called um, Warner Village is themed after a suburban neighborhood, um, and all of these buildings are facades. Now the big difference between these facades and our other facades is that uh, unlike our other ones, which just serve the purpose of protecting the image on the outside, these ones do have a practical use to them. They are an exception. Uh, if you were to walk inside any of these houses, you're not going to find a cozy house. You're just going to find a office space for all of the assorted productions all across the lot. Um, and of course they, but, but of course they are used to film. So everyone and trick or treating, you can see them. Uh, trick or treat in this area and also like I mentioned all American over here we have one house 187 on our left hand side like I mentioned that is the house the front of Bob's house from Bob Hart's Abishola. now when it comes to this whole street uh, before it was a before it was a just uh, a street the way that we see it right now um, this was this was a western backlot set um, and this western was called western set was called Laramie Street, and we used it for multiple other things. We it appeared in Star Trek. It also appeared in um, it also appeared in Will Smith's Wild Wild West. All right, so once again, this backlot is called Park Place, and uh, like most of our other backlots, uh, this is the place where production designers develop a lot of their work. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what production designers are and what they do, their job is basically to make sure that every single aesthetic element of a film or TV show looks the way that it has to for the screen. So they're, they make sure that the uh, props, that the sets, that the, 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 uh, that the wardrobe all looks the way that it has to. So if it's a period piece, they make sure that it looks like a period piece. Uh, and they add those physical elements that transport us back in time or forward in time or just let us take, or just take us to wherever we need to go for the film itself. You probably have already noticed we have the back side of the alibi room right there. Uh, the alibi room is a very interesting location. It is, uh, it is uh, actually split into three different areas. Uh, the outside is in another one of our back lots called Midwest Street. The inside is at a sound stage and the back side is, is, is right here. So the alibi room is one place, but it's actually three different locations. Now I'm going to take one volunteer. Oh, yeah, you yeah. see it's completely hollow? All right, oh. give it a hand for the demonstration, everybody. <laughs> We're going to keep going down the, down the street. You might remember in that movie, there is uh, there's a lot of great, very, very difficult to capture on a camera because it is so small. So um, whenever you go into a film set and they activate our rain grids, uh, they enhance those rain droplets to be about five times the size of actual rain droplets from being from hanging upside down. Uh, so if you watch the scene, you can see his neck bulging. That's not him flexing, that's just in front of me. <laughs> Now some other, uh, some other there is where TV Rachel and Monica are peeking to kind of like building. That is so we can change out the lights and change the production of the lights working so. And keep going down this way. Alright. Outside of Central Park. I'm going to keep going down this way. Like I mentioned, there's very little room. It is open. So just to show you all how most facades look, like like I mentioned before, that was a practical set, so we can actually go inside. But most other facades are going to look like this. There's no space inside. It's just so the actors can walk in and out, pretend like they're doing stuff. So. Uh, if I were to open the majority, the door, open the majority of these facades, there's either very limited space. There's nothing at all. There's a um, there's a hole. And that's so we can put parking meters. We can put lights and all other kinds of things. Um, so again, that helps with the impermanence because not all, not every city is going to look the same. So this helps production designers going like, to change them into whatever. Yeah. Place. So we're going to hop down just for a little bit um, before we hop.
Why did it preserve the... First part of the process is that you read the screenplay, and as you read the screenplay, you sort of visualize the people, like who they are and where they come from. I'm Colleen Atwood, and I'm a listener. And it's very intimidating at first. Moments that's first the first hour, actually. My name is Stuart Cray. I'm the production designer on the Harry Potter films. The production designer is responsible for the setting for each scene and also designing and building the sets. My name is Nathan Crowley. I'm a production designer. I will start each scene and try to make a story order and try and find visions that connect. You're Christmas, Ron. What are you wearing? Oh, none made it. 
It looks like you got one too. You've got presents. Yeah. Okay, picture is up. Get ready to record. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. What are you wearing? Oh, Mum made it. Looks like you've got one too. I've, I've got presents? Design and record many of the sounds you hear in your favorite television shows and feature films. In fact, most of what. Okay. 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 Welcome to Action and Magic. My name is Jim. I just have a couple guidelines to go over before you head on in. Please refrain from touching any of the costumes or vehicles you're going to see. They are all production used. They're interactive things you can touch all you want. Don't forget to get sorted in by the sorting hat as well. Uh, as you head up the ramp, uh, your right hand side is going to be DC Universe. Straight back is going to be Harry Potter. There's a hallway in between if you need to use the restroom. And you're going to want to finish up in what we call our celebration room. There's a bunch of Oscars in there. That's going to be up behind the big WB on your left hand side. Go there last because that ends it out from the studio store. Once you're out there, you can't get back in. So have fun, everybody.
the last time. This is for sale.